own scroll from our own two hands, holistic, sustainable, abundant intentions and actions. And today I have a really amazing powerhouse couple that I get to um, interview, and I'm very honored to be able to do that, um, with an amazing company that is doing a lot of amazing things here in the city that are quite holistic, sustainable, and abundant. Um, so I have Shine, a good friend of mine, and Crystal. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, or me coming here. You look so good. Yeah. So we're both doing great today? We are. Yes, I am. Cool. Um, yeah, cool. Um, okay, so do you want to just start out by giving us a little bio of who you are and how you came together to bring Unite to Vancouver? Mm -hmm. That's Unite, right <laughs> <laughs> Um who we are, uh, we both love hosting events in Vancouver, so I think over the years we've both done a lot of different things with house parties and living collectively, living with lots of people. Um, we ended up having lots of gatherings and musical evenings and uh, for me with kids, family events and um, both very creative I think and then also having a, a real drive to elevate the world to uh, bring positivity to the to people in general and um, find ways to bring forward some of the things that to us both of us I came from a very alternative family and grew up here in Vancouver um, was already exposed to a lot of health and wellness things uh, when I was very young so it wasn't new for me um, and as I kind of got older and realized, oh, that's not the norm for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, they're discovering this stuff at, at my age, in their 20s and 30s, when they've had health crises or money or relationship stuff, and then they're looking for, like, there must be more than just the mainstream. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of found out that, oh, yeah, it's not everybody that already knows about this. So a big mission for Unite is to help kind of bridge the worlds mm. of the health and wellness, more alternative, to me feels mainstream, but, right. but to most people feels really leading edge and unproven and undocumented kind of things, and really showing how positive and effective and supportive mm. um, a lot of it can be, and mm. doesn't have to be complicated and easily integrated, so yeah. um, with our Unite events we find ways to just kind of trickle little bits of this into people's lives. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. want to add anything, honey? And Shine, a bit of your background. I know you did a lot of traveling, and mm. we originally did mates <coughs> briefly um, yeah. back in the day. Yeah, my background, um, I grew up in a pretty happy house. My mom was into all this holistic wellness stuff. She was a yoga teacher when I was young, or sorry, when she, when she was before me, she was a yoga teacher. Before yoga was yoga, it was like, she was always on that leading edge of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then she met my dad and they were both into lots of uh, like rights movements. And then um, they had me. And so I grew up with this kind of uh, some like some wellness and lots of like social activism mm -hmm. and stuff. Like I was just part of our, our nature, part of the, the family. And then my dad got sick when I was 12 and he died when I was 15 from uh, the same kind of cancer that Terry Fox had. And my mom got super depressed and that kind of, and she was a PhD psychologist, but she didn't have the skills to really um, support herself. And she, none of the people in her circle who had all the degrees and all the kind of more, more I guess the, whatever the mainstream, like psychology and psychiatry were able to help her. And so she spent five years in this deep depression and went through suicidal thoughts and the, all these intense things. And so I kind of, um, I stepped in, my sister was younger, she's like four or five years younger than me, so I kind of stepped in and, and was supporting, helping to, to manage the house as she was going through that. And then she finally kind of hit, hit a point where it was like, shit or get off the bot. You know, I, I, helped, I helped her sort of <laughs> come to that. I was like, okay, mom, we're, we're good. Let's, let's, let's either, you know, one way or the other, let's do this. Yeah. And so she decided to, to get help and, and to figure out what she needed. And she moved back to Alberta. She found this therapy called The Journey, which was um, kind of an inner process, um, a visualization that helped her access a memory of when she was in the womb and something terrible had happened to her and her mom had tried to like, commit, uh, tried to have an abortion with like knitting needles or something crazy. And it was 
it's okay, I'm sharing this moment. <laughs> yeah. um, and, uh, and so she had this, this trauma come up from, that she didn't really know existed. And wow. she sort of um, went through the process of clearing it and releasing mm. the emotions through this journey process that Brandon Bayes, who used to work with Tony Robbins, had pioneered. Mm. And she, she says that her depression was cleared within a couple hours wow. and it's never come back. And so because she went to the heart of it, right. which started from <clears throat> being in the womb. Right. right. It's like I, I don't know, but it seems like what happened is that she had this this old repressed memory. Right. And or even energy or whatever power, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. Something that happened and yeah. so it was sort of like dormant. Right. And it maybe it was affecting her life, but it wasn't it wasn't big enough that it was right. in, but then when my dad died, right. that kind of triggered right. it. So that she was absolutely like she was unable to really function. Right. Well, she was. Yeah. She did the best. Yeah. So, so that's when it kind of all. Yeah. Because even if you have like an old wound, a physical one, right? Right. And then you hurt yourself again in that right. spot, it's going to be twice as bad as right. if it was the first time because it's already sensitive. Exactly. Right. right. So then that kind of that opened my eyes, and I was like, oh, that's. I didn't really think much of it because I didn't know mainstream medicine alternative. I was, I was like a hockey playing. Mm. Okay, I didn't know that about you. <laughs> not in the spiritual world whatsoever. Wow. Not into that. wellness. I, you know, yeah. ate whatever I wanted and yeah. worked out a lot, so I didn't. You didn't do smoothies yet? No. I, <laughs> I mean, I did slurpees when I was a kid. Right. I probably did smoothies, I don't know. Yeah. But I was not at all health conscious. My mom was super health conscious, so I actually pushed against her. Oh. So I was like, fuck you. That was your way of rebelling. Yeah, it was your way of eating sugar and pasta all day. <laughs> and so, so then when she. When she had kind of went through that, and I saw the difference it had made in her, and she sort of dragged me, you know, a little bit to the to the journey process mm. uh, training. So I learned from other people, and I kind of had a big breakthrough because when my when my father died, I didn't really cry and I wasn't really upset. It was just like, oh, I, it was interesting actually. I saw his body, and and I looked at him, and I was like, oh, that's not my dad, mm. obviously. Like it was like this shell. Right. I was like, hmm, that's so not at twelve, you really could comprehend. Or that. fifteen. Oh, fifteen. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. And then he got sick on himself. Oh, okay. Him. Okay. So I was like, oh, that's not my dad. So if that's not my dad, then he must have been something other than mm. his body. And if he's something other than his body, then he's still here. And if he's still here, he would want me to do what I love and be happy. So I'm just gonna go do that. Wow. So literally, like, the morning he died, I had that like thought, and I, I was just like. I'm going to play hockey. Like I didn't wow. have a, I didn't have a lot of processing to do around it, and we had like completed a lot. So it was interesting. So, but then, so I went to this journey thing, and she, uh, one woman sort of guided me to, and I, I was very like stoic. Right. Like, I, I was so at that of, point, you're about twenty because it was five years after. Probably yeah. Whatever, yeah. Right. <laughs> probably yeah. Exactly. Good, yeah. Good math. So, <laughs> so then I'm like, I was very kind of, uh, yeah, just wasn't wasn't very into feeling. I actually, I would actually watch the the show Party of Five. Oh yeah. Because it was like the one thing that where I could actually feel something, mm. and it, for some reason that wasn't. And I, I was also very, uh, very distant from relationships. I kind of had my heart broken at fifteen, and then I just was was really distant. Mm. And so I kind of like turned off some of those pieces, I guess, of, right. of feeling. And uh, and then this journey stuff helped me sort of access some of that, mm. and like have a deep cry for the first time in you know five or however right. long, like long long time. Right. And all these all these things so that was really powerful and good for me and then it also sort of sparked within me this idea that there must be some uh, easier there must be a, a easier way than every time you have something come up to have to like sit and do this journey and you have to have like right. someone do it with you and you can do it on your own but it's not it's not, I don't find it as effective I, I, I need that support but I'm like, oh man, it's like two hours of a journey. It just felt like a lot. I was like, ah, there must be like a better, there must be an easier way. Right. I'm, a, I'm very like, I like Having efficiency. Having a slurpee or something. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I don't know. It just felt, it felt long. Right. From where I was standing. Right. And, and like, arduous. Like, yeah. yeah. It's like a lot of work. Yeah. You know, like process all the things. Right. Although it was effective for a lot of sure. people. So maybe there's. And so I was, I was like, anyways, that was just where my mindset went. Right. So like, okay, how do I do this more efficiently? Because when I would like right. sweep a floor. I would think, okay, what's the most efficient way to do this? Right. I was, that's Strategic. Where, that's where yeah. my mind goes. Love it. And so then I learned about energy work and energy healing, and I realized that that's cool, but then again, it's like someone else kind of like 
holding space for you, but maybe it's not getting, it's not actually helping that person, uh, whatever they're out of balance with, they're creating in their day-to-day -day life and their moment-to-moment -moment mm -hmm. thoughts. And so one energy healing session, even you know once a day or twice a day, it's like you're still not getting to that Right, psychological the, maybe the, or the piece, like the, the right. kind of the core. Right. And actually, that brought you there in the first place. Right. Yeah. And then my mom introduced me to Abraham. Right. Like a while ago, Abraham and I saw X. I saw Abraham on the the secret, and that like really clicked for me, and I was like, I know this person, I I feel it, and I resonate, and and then that began me on a journey, and then I I kind of went the I went another direction where I started to do more. Mm, like emotional clearing and emotional like cleaning up mm -hmm. trying to like fix when I would feel bad I thought I thought the way that it worked is that there was all these negative thoughts negative feelings and that I could just like get them and clean them up mm -hmm. and then I would just have nothing but pure positive thoughts okay. and feelings and so I spent you know a, the better part of a, I don't know, a long time probably like five years or something She's like, just moving out of the sun. Oh, no. <laughs> She's like, I've heard this story too many times. I'm gone. So, so I and and then I realized um, as I started to like enter into intimate relationships again and have actual like uh, like try to have actual uh, intimate relationships because I was more surface. Um, I I found that when things were going well, I could sort of get away with doing this emotional processing work, but when things got triggered and I got really upset, mm -hmm. then it would sort of throw me out for days. Right. It was so intense. It was like, I was like trying to t t clear the world and it was right. like all this like stuff. Water kind of. It was intense, yeah. And so I knew that it wasn't the best ever. And then, and then, uh, mm, then I, I met Crystal and we started our what own. What year did you guys meet? Three or four years. Four years. Four years. Four years. Almost, yeah. In December. Yeah. And so. And was it an instant thing, like, or it took a minute, or? I actually don't know that part of the story. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, gosh, I'll finish this. Both. I'll finish this story. Okay. It was it was a very quick thing. <laughs> we 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 got to know each other very very quickly, very well. Yeah. Um. So, so, basically, I was, uh, getting into on that thread of of and through this process, I was also writing music. Right. And that was part of my spiritual journey where I would, I would just be in such a, I, I spent nice. like, I spent like five years in this really open, like beautiful state where I wasn't trying to clear anything. I, I hadn't really gotten there yet. I was just really open and excited. Mm -hmm. And I was very, I was, I call it my professional hippie days mm -hmm. where I was just like open that's and when we met. traveling. You, you okay, call it yeah, yeah. the tail end. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so in that time I sort of was receiving this music where I would just hear beautiful music and be just beautiful words and melodies and then I would record it or write it down and then it was just this like fun and so I kind of played that that game for a while and thought that that's something I wanted to do but I always had this passion this urge to like what's my mission what's my passion and I spent a lot of time and and I would I mean looking back I would say that I might have wasted a lot of time and I would recommend that other people don't do this but I spent a lot of time waiting and like not moving forward on mm. anything because I wanted to be sure that it was the thing. Mm. And so I really had like such a strong desire to be of the most service. And mm. so I was like, okay, I could become a musician and I had enough talent to, to do the things and to like play like a, you know, Ed Sheeran or I don't know, someone. Like I was a great songwriter, a great singer, and I knew that I could go down that road. And, but I was like, ah, it doesn't feel like it would be the impact I want on the world because no matter how good your music is, people only hear it for, you know, a few minutes or maybe an hour at most a day. Yeah. And it still isn't creating the like, the impact. depth of impact that mm -hmm. I wanted. And then I was like, well, what if I got into emotional processing and I could become like a Tony Robbins and right. you know, treat people and create workshops and seminars. And even then it was like, mm, it's cool, but not, not not one way will work for everybody. Right. And even Tony Robbins is only hitting like, you know, millions. Like, I don't know how many people he's helped. Maybe like a hundred million. But that's still like such a small percentage of the planet. Mm. Right. And it's great. There's a ripple impact. He's doing amazing, amazing work. I love it. But I was like, mm, that doesn't feel like it. I don't feel like that's my, my role is to be a, to be a Tony Robbins and to like just do that. 
And so I kind of was like thinking about what, what's my, what's the best way that I can be of service to the planet. Right. And I started to get this, this like vision for what Unite mm. is now, right. where it's, it's not one modality. Right. It's a, it's a hub. It's, mm -hmm. it's a, and, and I found this through being a natural connector. Mm -hmm. So I, I have one story, I like, I was sitting on the bus and I was just in the flow and in my professional hippie days, I was very intuitive and very like just only following the flow. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times I would be what, I would be the, 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 a tool for the universe to create a synchronistic connection for someone else. And so this one time I was on a bus and this woman walks by me, she stops and she looks at me and she says, I think I need to sit with you. Wow. And talk to you. Interesting. And, and she's like this gorgeous, you know, act, actress we met later. She was a beautiful woman. I'm like, okay, come, come cool. sit. Cool. And so she sits and then she's like, I, I, you know, what's up? What's your name? Blah, blah, blah. And then she's like, well, I just moved here. I'm looking for a place. I'm looking for work. And I think by the end of the bus ride, which was like five or 10 minutes, she had a place to stay and a job. And, and I was like, man, if I could just make money at doing this, right? like I would be set because right. I'm so good to at that connection, <clears throat> making that connections. Right. I love that. And, and it, what a lot of people, and it's will, rewarding and you feel it's so fun. Fun. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Like nothing makes me happier than going on Facebook and like posting something like, Hey, do you guys know, or someone's looking for something and I'm like, Oh, try this person. Or right. make, and I love just seeing, I love sort of like being that, that final yeah. like, click. There you go. And so, so this, this, business, this, this idea started to form of like a, a technology that could uh, bring together all of the different products and services and uh, events and ideas, information, people, and sort of create a, a space where people could really find what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. And like at its, what the, the part where I get excited or that, that feels really interesting is like, say someone comes on and they have Alzheimer's or I don't know, PTSD and they can go on and they can type that in and, and so like you might you type in PTSD and then it, it it'll we'll also have some more information about you as much as you want and then it will eventually be able to show you here are all the the um, science articles mm -hmm. on PTSD here's all the what the experts are saying of like what an effective treatment is here's the research and here are people's personal experiences mm. of like, here's how I healed my PTSD and then and we're going to get people to really get detailed. And then it'll take all that information and it'll mash it all together and maybe give you like the top five or whatever things that sort of are common across people who've healed PTSD. Mm -hmm. So maybe it was meditation, but I don't right. know what it is. Right. But that's the point is to create like a, a, a universal resource where people can share their information, right. uh, whether it's like research or science or personal. Right experience and then and then have a space where then things can be uh, shared and then you can also rate like maybe there's a maybe there's a supplement that helps with something and people can figure out okay which company makes the best version of that supplement right. it's sustainably sourced it's the best whatever whatever mm -hmm. and so eventually like you'll be able to have this thing where it can give you your give you some really great ideas of next steps it can give you if you have a diagnosis or something that's going on maybe it can feel lonely or hopeless and so this could maybe give people hope because they can see, oh, there's this many people here who've actually healed it. Right. That's amazing. And, they, and they're like through it and they fin they, they're done. Like, they, like right. your friend with uh, MS, right? Yeah. That's amazing, right? Yeah. So ha creating a, a place to share those stories and right. to house them and then to, 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 to curate that data and present it to someone in a really simple format where it's like, here's the top three or five or 10 things mm -hmm. that other people have done that you might want to try it. Right. And it kind of, number one, it gives hope. Number two, it gives you sort of a plan mm -hmm. and a, an idea of like, here's some action steps. Right. And yeah, so that's... That's a big part of where you want to go with Unite. That's, that's the technology platform. Okay. And so we really we really see that as kind of the uh, the, the web that connects everything. That's mm -hmm. like the, the underlying um, the substrate of, of everything. I don't even know what substrate means. <laughs> It just sounded cool. <laughs> and then uh, and then there's there's the events which kind of sit on top of that, which are more of um, like what we're, we're, up, we're up to now with the events is like um, creating these new new things called uh, soulscapes. soulscapes. 
Mm -hmm. United Soulscapes is looking so good. So we're going to rent out the planetarium, the aquarium, cool. the IMAX at the Science World, the uh, Bloedel Conservatory, places like that, and have beautiful, like, immersive multimedia meditations and sound right. healings and parties and events at right. these epic spaces. And then that will bring in, because our, our Dream Journeys events at the Planetarium went so well and were so well received and such a broad audience got to experience something that was a little bit esoteric, a little bit like cool, right. spiritual and out there right. and, and maybe reached an audience that it wouldn't have reached if it was presented as just a sound healing mm -hmm. or just a, just a spiritual thing. And so we want to create that experience where people, it's like a Cirque du Soleil kind of experience mm -hmm. where people come and it's just beautiful and immersive and fun. Mm -hmm. And then we're, we're also creating a more educational arm of our events where mm -hmm. we're really using the Abraham Hicks teachings and sort of my background and, and all the, basically looking at what, what's working. Right. And once the app is running, that will be a part of it is like what's actually working for people and we can feature that. Mm -hmm. And then creating workshops and classes and mm -hmm. coaching. So and the technology is going to be an app. It'll be an app on the website, like Facebook. Right, so, right. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And then the last the last piece of Unite is the spaces. So we have the events, the technology, and the spaces. So we right. are creating physical locations that will house all these things. So we'll have food, healthy food, a store with all these other right. products, yeah. events Do you remember space. the beginning you were talking yeah. about that? Yeah, yeah. Yoga, maybe some co-working, and then eventually we build it into these like eco towers or eco like yeah. mini cities or... or uh, Eco villages where we have people actually living together, and there's office space we're working together, mm -hmm. and then there's um, commercial space for all the all the cool. stores and things. So. I worked in a, I lived in a place kind of like that in Courtney. I don't know oh, cool. Like Courtney much? Oh. Yeah, so there's Tin Town. Mm. Yeah, and so Tin Town, um, the downstairs is all commercial, okay. and the upstairs is all residential. Nice. Yeah, and it's actually in like architecture magazines or something oh, cool. because um, there's like really high ceilings. Like it looks like mm. like the part of a farm. But like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, it's like a silo, I guess. I don't know. But it's, it's yeah, triangular. So when mm. you walk in, it's just like, so. and they say that that's really amazing energy to keep for healing too, apparently. I don't right. know. But, um, well, is yeah. Is it more of a community? Yeah, it is. They call it Tin Town. It has a lot of, Love it. yeah. Like um, it. And there's, uh, what's it called? School, not Montessori, but what's the other one? Uh, what, the Bell Dog School, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's there too. It's pretty interesting. Cool. Yeah. Um, okay, so with all of this, because there's also imaginal. That was like the longest answer. I know. Tell me a tiny bit about your That's okay, but we're talking. Like, so it's good. Like, let's just get it all out. <laughs> this is what we're doing. And obviously, you needed to say that, yeah, right? Yeah. So I just. I love talking yeah. about it. <laughs> so, what about imaginals? Because somewhere in yeah. the beginning, yeah. and that was a big. That's been a yeah. piece too, right? Yeah. So, can you talk about imaginals and what that is and how that connects to you, right? Yeah. Um, that was a fun piece. Um, when Shannon and I started working together, um, we started with another friend and his friend. And when we stopped working together in that group, we were really kind of, who are we? What do we want to, like, together as a unit, but also in this community, what do we want to bring out for the community? What do we want to offer up? Mm -hmm. um, but you had already established the Unite name. No. Okay. Yeah. So this okay. is our kind of first okay. we, we we started off in business right. together with someone else who was really leading right. the the energy and we were just happily fl floating along, okay. learning a lot, learning okay. a lot. Um and we were already, already a couple. Yes. Okay. But not having that responsibility of being the event leads right. and the event the or the company leads. Right. Um mm. so a lot of the a lot of the back end felt like it was being taken care of so we could just do the kind of front forward facing play and create and put yeah. stuff out there. Um, so when that shifted, we were in the place of how do we want to identify ourselves and um, we got to Imaginal by, mm. what was a documentary we watched, that, that clip or where the where the word came from. Um, yeah, I've been I, I've heard it. Yeah, actually, I saw that you guys Shine, made though, it was pretty amazing. Shine had heard, that, heard of the concept and we did some more research about it and um, Basically, if you don't know, um, and we can have a link at the bottom. Exactly, yes, yeah, to, to the video. Um, the imaginal cells are cells that exist in the caterpillar that hold the transformational genes to become the butterfly. So they're cells. They're, they're cells that are dormant in the caterpillar. They don't do anything, and then at a certain point, they kick into gear, wow. and that sets its like energy to like, okay, I've got to you know start. Right. And the imaginal cells then there's actually a fight. 
of course, because the caterpillar doesn't want to give up mm. his his <laughs> life. So there's a struggle between um, a bit like cancer cells, like they're like, what is this cell? It's it's foreign. We don't know what it is. So there's a struggle. Or even a war of dark and light. Exactly. There's a there's a struggle, an internal struggle, existential <laughs> crisis for the caterpillar. Of the old and the new. The old and the new. Right. Eventually, of course, the imaginal cells do take over, and the caterpillar cells die, and actually they are the fuel to start the caterpillar on its journey. So, um, as much as that's a cool idea, the other place that imaginal cells, the only other place in any other animal that they believe they've found imaginal cells are actually in the human heart. Wow! So, <laughs> yeah. So, there's not a lot of information on that, it's just starting out, but um, what, what we really love is the, the concept that the people that are waking up in the world, whatever you, you know, like... What does that mean? Whatever that, that like the people that are looking for more and wanting to do something different, mm -hmm. we feel like those are the imaginal cells for humanity. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that are w sparking that change. And for a minute, there's a bit of a battle. There's a right. bit of resistance. Burning witches. Between the dark and the light. <laughs> you know, a little bit of misunderstanding, a little bit of demonization. Um, and then eventually, for any change to happen, those cells overwhelm the old and actually, from what was past, can birth the mm. new time and right. space. Right. So, we, long-winded, we feel like the imaginal cells are, we are the imaginal cells. Mm. And all the light workers and all the change makers are the, the imaginal cells and we're really being that trailblazing without feeling like we've got to change them, but right. more like the more we multiply and the more mm. we, there, there isn't needing to be a conformist, it's actually mm. the more we multiply and the more we support the ones that are doing that, the, the just the greater wave there will be mm. and, and mm. it will create that change. Mm. So um, our first company is uh, Imaginal Entertainment. That's what we incorporated, mm. so. Which is eventually probably gonna become like a film company. <laughs> <laughs> Imaginal Entertainment. Yes. <laughs> Making immersive dome shows. <laughs> feature films or something else. Yeah, and Unite was born out of that. Maybe a year later, we came up with that brand. They're sort of separate. No, no. Kind of help. Unite was born months. in like June. Okay, six months later. Not so, even like March to June. Yeah. Okay, March Three to months. June later. Yeah. yeah. Um, so they are separate, but they help interconnect with one so another. So what we feel is mm -hmm. when we were coming front facing, we were doing a lot of. Um, building the brand at that time, a lot of networking and connecting. And oh yes, our company is Imaginal. Huh? What's that? <laughs> Vaginal? Vaginal? Oh wow! Yeah. That was Mima, by the way. <laughs> Only Mima said that. No, I think we got that a couple more times. Not me. And it took. And it was fun to get into the story, but we found it was just even having it on a business card. It needed an explanation. Right. Mm. Um, and it it pushed us from our brand in the past with the partner we've been working with that had a more mainstream appeal. It pushed right. us really far into the spiritual mm. world, um, which was not really our target market. Right. We don't, there's, you want to keep it open. There's many people preaching to the choir of our spiritual community. We so honor those people and we really feel like where we fit in and our skills, my skill mm. is really to be a bridge. Right. And I really felt like I never fit fully in any of those totally communities agree. and I was really good at being that chameleon right. and being able to kind of interpret. And I'm now using the word interpreter so we can interpret from the very spiritual to mm. the more mainstream and really totally make it feel right. safe for right. everyone. So um, Unite was kind of a, a brainchild with another business partner we were working with for a minute, mm -hmm. lovely Jennifer Pereira. Um, and we thought about, you know, just brainstorming what is it that we want to do and what's the crux of it and it really was bringing people together and connecting and Unite feels like an easy, you say Unite, people get it. Yeah. It's, it just make, it makes sense. Yeah. So now for us, the way the two brands work together is Unite is what we do and Imaginals are what we are. Mm. Yeah. That's how we and Imaginals is not really a brand for us anymore. It's the energy behind it, yeah, which right. is really, that's kind of what's leading it, is mm -hmm. the imaginals are the people that we're supporting in the mm -hmm. community, and they're the ones that we're showcasing to the world. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm, like, for the, for 
for the technology piece right. and for the events. But what I what I really saw, because I I grew up as a hockey player, so yeah. as a regular kid, like whatever normal stuff. Do you right? still play hockey though? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> Just kidding. And then and then my mom was always a little bit out there, and I thought she was you know fine, but I, I never really like accepted. I was it just wasn't part of my life. Right. And then I went, I went and traveled, and um, the universe was like, "You're not going to play hockey. Here's a sprained ankle," and I, oh. I couldn't play. And so I went traveling, and I because I didn't want to go to school, I was just like wanted to go. And I met this woman who kind of sparked my mm. journey into spirituality and, and songwriting and whatnot. And that and, was during the five-year hippie period. Yeah, okay. yeah, that was right after my father. Or that was like, yeah, I think after that was after school. So. Um, what were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, imaginals? Oh, right. About how it's, how it's like, and impacting met. people, right. So oh, I, and you're talking about the technology piece. Yeah. So I basically, I traveled around, and I was just looking for, I felt so out of, I felt so, like, different all of a sudden. Mm. Like, my friends from high school would, would refer to me as, like, before Jasper and after Jasper. Mm. Because uh, that was what that was what I was traveling, so I went to Jasper, Alberta, and met this woman, and that was a big shift. And so I really had a big transformation, but then that left me feeling really alone because I, I, all of a sudden I didn't really like connect with my right. friends, and I actually don't really know anybody anymore. That like, I don't, I'm, I'm just not that connected to anyone I went to school with or mm. even I grew up here. Mm -hmm. And so then I ended up going to Vic Victoria, and it was like. In two weeks, I had just manifested this most amazing community, and I felt like I finally found my like tribe. I was like, "Oh my God, there's people like me!" Like it was amazing. It was right. just this this like, oh, wow, like an unbelievable thing right. to have happened. And it was my first experience of like meeting this like group. And right. it was like it was, was like Jeff part of that? No. Okay. In Victoria, this was Victoria. Okay. okay. Yeah. And so I just I just had such a beautiful experience there. And then that kind of sparked the move back to Vancouver, and then I integrated super quick with the Vancouver community, mm -hmm. and, and and it was like, oh my god, there's this whole group of people that are all uh, into this stuff, right. into spirituality and health and wellness, but a lot of them are broke. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are like are so talented, right. are like artists. Right. Like, they don't know how to run a business. They they're, they're not they don't fit into the mainstream. Right. Yet. So they're not they're super talented artists, but they're not going to get a record deal or maybe like right. make it on the on the mainstream and so I was just looking at it was like it was like seeing like this all this potential and then not a ton of of relationship to like the actual physical like financial right. like material Abundance. world and it was like hmm like that's odd because I grew up in like my you know my family had enough money I had a car I went to a mm -hmm. private school like so money, you grew up with some abundance. money was not it money didn't even you know, I didn't make decisions Based on like, do I have enough money? Until I was in my mid twenties, probably, mm -hmm. because I was just so in that mindset. Was good. <laughs> was just, like, money was just easy. Yeah. And that's why right now I just I'm like I'm a, I'm a such a good spender. <laughs> I, I spend money so well. I do that too. It's so fun. I grew up starting like that too, and I'm kind of like, yeah, I hear you. So I, I met all these people who were who were so talented and so amazing and such good hearts, but maybe didn't have the business skills or didn't have the whatever skills right. to like fully activate on on their gifts and, and bring it to the world and and I feel like that was a reflection of me so they're probably, where you were at the time of course right because we can only see what we are so there were I'm sure people who were awesome spiritual people who had who were activating their gifts and receiving right. lots of abundance so I was meeting these people but that was sort of inspiration for me and but still I kind of see that they're like there's this Airbnb is really interesting because you you have a house and you put it up and then you don't have to do anything. You just wait. And mm -hmm. Airbnb sells your place for you. Right, and they go in and clean and they do all the Well no, but oh, okay. they, they like <laughs> you can you, you can, they you organize can, you can organize right. that. Yeah. But like but, but so we like we put our place up on Airbnb and it just was easy. We put our place up on Craigslist, not so easy. Mm -hmm. Like literally like full all summer. N like not even maybe one or two. Right. So I was like, oh, there's this, it's the, the platform. Right. Like 
there's there's such a power in having a platform right. and where how people, that platform unfolds or what it looks like. Right. Yeah. And in and in right now, the main mode that people use to promote themselves is, is online. Right. And the big companies Especially the millennials. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The big companies, Facebook, Google, um, anywhere else that you would go online Instagram. to sort of post or Instagram, yeah. All these places that you would that people promote themselves as events, products, services. Yeah. They all run on ads. Right. That's their business model. So they are they give you a lot of free uh, exposure at the beginning to get people on the platform. Right. So anyone who's interested in that, LinkedIn is apparently at the beginning right now. So they're right. getting lots of free. Yeah, yeah. They're getting lots of free promotion. Mm -hmm. so, right now, yeah. Oh, I like that. <laughs> TikTok is, is popping. Um, oh, right. Okay. Anyway, Gary Vee is amazing. I love Gary Vee. Okay. You know him? No, he's the best for marketing. I haven't heard so of TikTok. Um, so I'm getting distracted. What were we talking about? I don't know, but I do want to bring up though. Oh, no, helping people. Okay. <laughs> one second, one second. So, so then, people, in in order to run a Facebook ad, it's not like it's not like super simple. We've done it, and I don't know that we've ever made a ton of money. And it's never felt easy enough that we could just do it, especially with all the all the rest of the stuff we've got going on. It's like there's such a it feels like there's such a small percentage of people who really have the patience and the understanding and the right personality type and whatever to really know how to like work with marketing right. as a business. Right. It's like it's a very unique skill set. Mm -hmm. Not everyone is good at it. Right. And if you don't have it, it's hard to promote yourself right now right. as a a holistic as a as anything I mean right. it, it happens but it can be hard right. so, so you kind of have to learn that too as well right yeah. and so what we want to do is, is we want to create this platform where anyone who is is offering something can put it up on the platform and so say you're a masseuse and you put it up and, and we already have in the in in the whatever algorithm that massage helps people with uh, stress and relaxation and muscle mm -hmm. tension blah, 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 right? yeah. and so and then these people can put in, oh, and my mas massage is specifically good for these things. So they can kind of, just like you would on Airbnb, you like you dress it up. Right. You like you present your best massage stuff. Right. And like here's what it is. You do your video. You do all the things to like just present yourself. Mm -hmm. And then what would have to happen on you know Facebook or Instagram or any of these other places next is like now you create content and you have to like market yourself and do all these things. And what we want to create is basically an algorithm where now when someone goes on the platform and they're looking for and they say hey I, I'm feeling stressed I'm looking for things that are relaxing I have muscle tension whatever then it automatically will find the the people that have services or products or events that match those needs and so this they would connect them and if this masseuse is really good then they will they start the getting reviews. the reviews which mm -hmm. will then boost their ratings right. and so right now a lot of the ads mean that you know and and it, it all works out in the end because there are there is like a viral component of people that are really good they'll just they'll get enough clients or mouth whatever um, but some people can you know if you have the money you can kind of get in front of in front of people right. um, through the ads and so we want to create a, a, a model that's a little different where the the best service the best we, we want to find the best result for the person who's looking for something right. we want to connect them with the perfect fit for what right. they're looking for. Right. And then we want to connect the offerer mm -hmm. of the service, of the massage, to find the, the best client for them. Right. So that's our goal, is to create a platform where everyone gets exactly what they want. Right. And it makes it really easy. And we sort of handle a lot of the marketing and the, uh, the connection that right now people are having to do on their own, which feels a bit, for us, feel, for me, I'm a pretty smart dude, and I know about computers, like I could figure it out. It just doesn't feel easy. It doesn't feel fun. It's like I, it's just another thing. I'm I'm trying to run a business and coming up with all these ideas, and I'm sure that we'll get there eventually and hire marketing people to, you know, optimize. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been that's definitely something that has been really really. A that's big, been the biggest obstacle. Mm, but also the biggest opportunity in order to connect with that abundance. Kind of. To kind of leave behind that time yeah. when you met all these artists that had this potential right. but weren't bridging it. Right. And it really has been our inspiration for how to um, support a need. Because that's a big thing mm -hmm. that you always hear, like, what's the need that you're filling? Right. 
because if you're not filling a need, no, what's not. the point, right? Yeah. So the need that we're filling is on two sides. We had somebody describe it really nicely. The platform, what did they call it? A um, well, resource and referral. A wellness network. resource and referral network. Right. So basically, mm -hmm. or resource and referral affiliate network. Anyway, so that we're really offering a resource and referrals to people. That the need is, like Sean said, that it's hard to find what you're looking for. Right. And it's hard to find who you're looking. Right. So either either the client or the person looking for it. So create creating a very easy way to a bit like eHarmony, mm -hmm. you know those kind of early early right. dating sites. I like long walks on the beach. Right? Yeah, <laughs> a little bit like that, where it's like this is what I'm looking for and this is who's offering it. Um, but for most of us, the the last thing we want to do is research. At least for me, I think Shine likes research. I hate research. Yeah. Um, I want someone to tell me, mm -hmm. and I, because per. per Firstly, I don't want to do the research, but I also, I would rather trust your opinion mm. than Google's opinion. Right. Because Google is telling me who paid the most to, right. to, to show me totally. that. Or the newspaper or the, totally. you know, the same, you don't want to go to yeah. a, you know, a, a fat bit of fitness coach or a broke right. financial advisor. Right. Kind of like, how do you, how do you right. already determine that? So creating a space where we as the community are actually rating everyone up and down depending mm -hmm. on what they're offering and how good their services are and how it worked and whatever the pieces are and really doing but it's not like my opinion oh they're good they're bad it's actually the community's opinion and storing that information like Yelp does right mm -hmm. Yelp you know the restaurant reviewer right mm -hmm. and you can also it's not okay these qualities are good and these qualities are bad for me if I'm looking for I want to find a restaurant that has um, organic package, like compostable packaging and organic food. Right. That's important to me so I can check those options. Right. Not yet. Uh, not yet, actually. Right. <laughs> That's another piece we want to work into the site. But um, I can check, let's say I'm vegan, so I can check the only show me vegan restaurants, right? right? So f we want to create a space where you could say, okay, I only want to see female masseuses because that's something important to me. Only in Vancouver, only in this area, only in this area. Mm. And the what we're really getting is people, many people are, are, are feeling the need for this. That's the mm -hmm. beautiful collective consciousness. Many people are feeling the call to offer something like this. And most people are so niche with it. So like the healers will come up with a really nice little healing platform just for the healers. Mm -hmm. And which is beautiful and it's a great start. And it's never going to flow over, you know, it's, it's right. really hard to get out of just that one box or someone else just for this and just for this category. And what we really see is we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. We want something that will connect to that healing community and will connect and will connect and will connect and really right. be that and hub. it open for where people are and what they want. Exactly. And make it easy to search through it because there is so much information. Right. There. So by putting in the algorithms where people can, um, sift based on what's important to them, mm -hmm. not our opinion, not, you know, any philosophy or religion or belief that it really is based on what's important to you. Mm -hmm. So that personalization is so important for people. And that is really the need that we feel like we're, we're filling is we're, we're offering people the ability to personalize what they're looking for, save time, find it more quickly, all localized in one area. You don't have to go to 18 different sites, you know, Groupon and right. Yelp and Facebook and Craigslist and all, like I, I go to so many places and you've got to have your password for each one. Yeah. I log in, I can't remember. Yeah. And I just searched over yeah, there. Yeah, the passwords. I've got to put a search thing over here and you know, this, yeah. it's, it's so exhausting. Yeah. So by eliminating that and having a one-stop shop for that, and then how we're really supporting the tribe that is the the producers, the healers, the artists, mm -hmm. the musicians, the coaches, the, the trainers, mm -hmm. the imaginals, yeah. that as you were saying, we all have to wear so many hats, right? So these beautiful mm -hmm. healers have to become web developers <laughs> and marketing strategists and this is they're right. not getting right. to actually do what they love to do. So that's right. another really big mission for Unite is to right. help the Imaginals do what they are here to do, right. which is spark that light, right. support the other right. lights, right. and actually 
soothe them right. by taking as many of those pieces away so we gonna when they come right. on the site it's gonna be really easy for them to fill in right. their information to send a thing to their friends to all get their ratings up to do testimonials. Mm. We're gonna pipe in as many pieces as possible so, so they can stay focused on their art or they can do exactly what right. they're meant to do. Which those people that you had met at that time who were less right. connected to the abundance to help Exactly. Like that. Totally. And yeah. there's there's so many amazing spiritually minded, amazing tech people, amazing right. accountants, amazing. Right. But they end up having to work two or three or eighteen jobs, and most of them are in a kind of stifling way because they're not getting enough of the work that really matters to them. Mm. So by again, like okay, these are like the top ten spiritual accountants in Vancouver. Right. Give them all the work. And then they get to focus full time mm -hmm. on that instead of having to be a server on the side and a, right. you know all these other things. So yeah. it's really, it, it feels like that focus, bringing back that focus. Yeah. I feel like that as a nutritionist, that's the direction I want to go because there's so many nutritionists that focus on sports yeah. and weight loss, which is fine. Yeah. But I've realized through my own journey of healing a lot of things, especially with hypothyroid, ADHD, brain fog, just some of these things, skin issues. A lot of it for me has been a lot of emotional, spiritual stuff. Yeah. So I'm realizing that's who I want to work with. Yeah. And it's okay that there's a lot of the nutritionists that work yeah. with, you know, the weight and other things, but for me that's where I connect, so that's where I want to best help and suit. So it would be an amazing platform to also use to be able to help exactly. connect with those kind of clients or customers that mm -hmm. also want that path. Exactly, really that yeah. shared values. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and for me it's it's one of those things that I'm happy I want to support all of humanity, but supporting the ones that actually are really working in the light, really focus on a big mission. And if we can just help make one bit of their life easier and push that mission, like, oh, yeah, so exciting. <laughs> yeah, you should light up your yeah, that's right? like, You know, just like easing that, like, okay, what are the pieces we can pull right. off of you here right. and give to the people that love doing it right. because people love doing it. Right. And, and this is a very modern idea and that mm -hmm. we all have to do everything in right. our own right. little apartment and we have to be good at everything right. Right. and and that's yeah. really you know as, as a parent yeah and as a single parent you really get thrown into like cook and clean and chauffeur and right. handyman and like what what are all the pieces right. let alone trying to be a good parent and when how you have that the support right the support exactly. systems in place and it can help to balance all that and still be a businesswoman as well as a mother. Exactly, as well Build, as building, a partner. building the community and so that we mm -hmm. can all, as much as possible, as much as we want, yeah. focus on the bits that we really love and channel everything else to the people that love mm -hmm. doing mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And get away from this really like the isolation right. piece. Mm -hmm. So, right. yeah. It's yeah. kind of like in the past there was the village. Right. right? And everyone had their role. Right. And we supported each other. Which is still a bit of an Eastern thing. That's what I was going to talk about a little bit okay. as well. And then, and then we kind of moved into the corporation. Right. Which is especially a really in the West, which really is still happening in the East. It's starting to be right. there too. But it's a really efficient solution if you okay. think about it. Okay. Like someone who's really good at numbers, right? They only do the numbers. Right. Someone who's really good with people, they only do the people. Mm -hmm. But there are obviously limitations to that. Like right. Maybe the values don't align. Maybe whatever. Right. And so I think what we're what we're creating here is kind of like bringing back the the village mentality and, and creating a a platform where people can focus on what they're best at, and then we just we connect them. We provide this kind of like service that allows people to find exactly what they need, so that they can feel really secure and solid in doing exactly what they love to do. Mm. And so is that a big motto then in Unite is to help support the community or like is there a motto or our our overarching mission has been so far to elevate consciousness. Elevate consciousness. Which right. basically means to help people feel happier yeah. and be and be more consistent. Love and light. Yeah, consistently like higher vibe, happy, um, aligned, like the Abraham terminology. Right. And then each branch has a kind of its own thing so the 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 technology is more around kind of housing happiness and creating creating a platform to help that grow. Um, and then the events is more about, you know, connecting people in, in real life and, right. and, and creating opportunities yeah. for that. Because a lot of it started with the events too, right? It did, yeah. The yeah. events was, was kind yeah. of the genesis. And the 
events are still happening. Can you talk about like what? Because I know there's been cacao ceremony and there's like clothing swaps and there was um, the one that you talked about. What was it? Not at the. Um, the yeah, we did. We did one at the planetarium. Planetarium. We did one at the. Yeah. Uh, what was it called? The. So what was the plan? Talk yeah. about that. Oh, no, one um, yeah, so again, it, it came out of wanting to make a combination of bring together different components in a new -er and unique way, um, feature a beautiful venue that a lot of people don't know about in the city, and create a really kind of nurturing, uplifting environment. So the Dream Journeys event was at the Planetarium, it has a full dome star theater, mm -hmm. um, so the, the full ceiling, 12 projectors, and you watch the universe and mm -hmm. everything on there. So, um, and you're able to just rent it out or whatever. So you can rent it out. Cool. Um, they have a star deck around where we would put vendors. So for us, um, so much of the experience actually, the main part, our names unite, the main part is bringing people together. So yes, we want to show them give them some breath work, some yoga, some sound healing, whatever the event is. Mm -hmm. But I kind of see that as the carrot. That's like, come play with us. Right. But actually, the, the, where the magic happens is before and after the, the show, mm -hmm. when there's connection time. Right. So mm -hmm. all of our events have at least an hour before and after, and if it's a longer event, there'll be an intermission, where we've got vendors, we're featuring local food, local artisans, and people just really holding an energetic container mm -hmm. to connect. Holding space. Holding space to connect. So we're doing that pre paving before the event. People are, oh, good to see you, lovely, excited, look at this, look at that. Building the energy, we go into whatever the event is at the planetarium. It was sound healing um, with uh, Matthew Costello and Peter Phoenix. Right. And then our release. Yes, it was in North Did Canada, you come? Right? No, no, she no, didn't. That's what she said. I'm glad you're listening. You're writing to us. Um, oh, maybe. Yeah. Matthew does a lot of the events in North Bend at the Salt Cave. Right, I've been to one yeah. of his events. Yeah, beautiful, yeah, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful singer. Yeah. So, um, him is along with um, and Peter Phoenix and Ari Laser, who's a geometer, sacred geometry. Right. They study geometry, so they, came, they built a show where Ari had created projections that he put on the ceiling mixed with some of the planetarium's own imagery, and he would kind of share a narration that he had written. Mm -hmm. um, and then the musicians would play through and over and, and add their music to it, it as well. So it was talking about sacred geometry and how we, we're all, you know, like so much of us is water, right? So mm -hmm. we are made up of a lot of water, cymatics, how um, water's affected by energy. So like of course- a little bit. Yeah. yeah, so of course we're affected by energy. So we're talking about the vibration, he goes into, um, different places around the world where sacred geometry has been found in ancient mm -hmm. architecture and, and art and the pyramids and kind of where that plays in. So the it was a beautiful show. <laughs> the the end result which was so amazing is we had two hundred and thirty people learning about vibration and learn learning about um, harmonics and how we can all vibrate at a frequency together. But in a very subtle way, you're mm -hmm. sitting in the dark, you're reclined, mm -hmm. you're relaxed, you're not being asked to pay attention and don't fidget because somebody might right. be watching and we're learning and mysterious stuff. Right. And it's a really immersive, relaxed, beautiful experience and mm -hmm. there's music and it's, 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 it's deep, but it's, um, it feels more like a movie than a, a workshop. Right. Mm -hmm. And you can still be free to be yourself and to take exactly. in what you want and to be yeah. individual. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and it really, it really did by bringing it in sideways, kind of like that. And if you didn't quite get it, it was still an interesting experience, and there's still a lot to be mm. absorbing. Mm -hmm. And and some people after the events too, I find, or even sometimes you read it, an empowering book, or even some of the experiences you were talking about, right? Years later, then you're like, whoa! They, they keep you realize how it impacted you, or how it mm. begun. Exactly. It, 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 you, keeps right? trickling. it yeah. keeps trickling in. My favorite part of the event, I would slip out right before it ended, and I'd watch these 230 people, most of which we didn't know, which was really exciting. Mm -hmm. Most of them were not part of the community, so we had hit a mainstream appeal mm -hmm. because of the venue, which right. was so...
just interesting. Like, right. Terry, on something's happening there. I don't know what it is, but cool. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Um, I've watched the people come out and just like, like some people would have tears rolling down Aww. their cheeks and people would just be and bubbling to each other and, mm -hmm. and excited and just that it had sparked something. And mm -hmm. then of course we had more time to connect and to share. Mm -hmm. And were there a lot of different ages or? There were, yeah. So that was one of the events where we had people bringing their children and their grandparents and their mm -hmm. boyfriends and their mm -hmm. aunties and their uncles. And it was a great way to intro. Like I would see, it was nice to meet, like I'd have like, our spiritual community friend, and then they would have their relatives with them, and it was a really nice way to be like, hey, come with me to this thing. It's not like too, you know, right. scary rock can get you to put spandex on and lie on the ground and do some weird breathing. Like, it's gonna be okay. Yeah. You just come watch a fun show. So it, it really hit that mm -hmm. connection piece, and that's what all our events um, over the years we've done. We was that one of the biggest ones you've done? Um, it was the most longest running. So we okay. did it that for 10 months in a row, the same show, and we had people oh, really? come back. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't even know that. Okay. yeah, we had people come back again and again because mm -hmm. even if you heard the information, you got it at different levels, and it was just such a beautiful Amazing. process in and of itself. Um, since then, we've done, we did a big uh, talks event at the Playhouse. That nice. was a 400, 500 people for that one. Mm -hmm. We did a harbor cruise with Dea Dova, mm -hmm. so she's a beautiful, sacred musician, right. rock star. Yeah, amazing. yeah. So harbor cruise, that was really fun to again, like go around Vancouver Harbor. Like, mm -hmm. when's the last time you did that? Right. So yeah. um, we, we did. What the about the cacao ceremony? That's a bit smaller. Um, not necessarily. Okay. Um, we did we did cacao for New Year's last year. We did cacao in the penthouse. We've done quite a few. Pollen we, we did cacao at the planetarium. Cacao at oh, the planetarium. Oh, so many of them. Yeah. I'll be coming one soon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We just kind of we'll we, we've been a part of 137 wow. events over the last three years, and that's including um, sort of affiliate ones that we are we're helping to promote. But for oh, our, okay. our own, it would be um, I think 100. Plus. So once you own it, it's through Unite, yeah. and then other ones you just help friends to yeah. promote we, and share. We yeah. share the imaginals with. Right. Yeah. 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 So for, as you were asking for upcoming events, we have taken, we took some time over the summer to really um, the beach parties were fun too. ramp up and kind of realign with what we really wanted the vision for Unite. So we just ran the beach parties, which were super fun. They turned A lot of the yoga stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that was basically like a yoga beach festival. Right. Which is super is fun. Sorry. Super fun. And again, creating a really public container um, where people were just like, what are you guys doing? It looks really awesome. And we had healers and vendors, and that was a really beautiful connection experience. And now we're wanting to really move even more into, um, we've played with uh, talks and workshops versus kind of more fun and uplifting and playful events mm -hmm. and trying to mash them together mm -hmm. and what we're really getting is that um, especially while we're reaching out to the community and building mm -hmm. that trust what people really want is to have fun they want to relax mm -hmm. and they don't want to there's a million workshops and trainings right. and very important work but a lot of times you get recommended or you know you go to someone you know and you're not really looking to get that on a, this kind of scale that we want to create mm -hmm. with someone new with a new presenting a new trainer mm -hmm. So what we're really getting is that the the big intro events to our community need to be fun need to be easy mm -hmm. So we've been looking at the aquarium like shine said mm -hmm. um, We're gonna do a New Year's event on oh. New Year's Day or yeah. New, New Year's, Year's Eve day. Yeah um, leading up to the countdown so um, creating more beautiful immersive experiences where there's a lot of time to connect and to play and to listen to music and to uh, watch something beautiful, to be offered lovely samples of things and, and taste food and just really get to feel elevated. Feel mm -hmm. elevated and feel taken care of on our, we, we went on the, the Abraham Hicks yeah, cruise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one of the best things about being on a cruise is being taken care of. Right. And yes, you've already paid for it, but it doesn't feel like it when they're just like bringing you food and like taking care of you and cleaning yeah. your room. So we really want to create in our events that pampering kind of experience. And then from that time when we've really created that energy, then we're gonna flow into, 
Okay, and for follow ups, we do have deeper dives, we do have mm -hmm. trainings, and we do have coaches and that we recommend. And the technology you're talking about. And we have the like technology that. that you can flow into, and all these kind of other pieces once we've built that trust. Right. And once we're like, okay, now Unite is a trusted figure in right. our life. We know they produce quality, we know mm -hmm. they've got the community's uh, best interests at heart. Mm -hmm. So now I don't need a personal recommendation from my best friend. Now I will actually take Unite's recommendation because I know that it is part of the collective mm -hmm. consciousness that they're taking. And do you want to grow it outside Vancouver or is mainly yeah. from Vancouver? Okay. Yeah. To make it like how you're saying. To hit. 100%. Yeah. Yes. Cool. But Vancouver is our, our community, Hot so it's definitely now. our. We were both born here, so it's yeah. our. our well, you were born in Vancouver too, eh? Uh, well. Born in Edmonton, moved here when I was four months old, so. Oh, yeah. Basically born and raised, yeah. Okay. Yeah. A lot of the questions yeah. I wanted to cover. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. Thank you so, so much. Really awesome. I appreciate you. Thanks, sweetie. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs> Ciao, amigos. Stop cool. all our Facebook lives. Well, that's awesome. You guys were great. That was great.